It, it's hard to know why I became a historian. Um, I think my father had a tremendous influence on me and my interest. He was born in Athens in 1930, and so he experienced the German occupation of Greece from 1941 to 1944, and he told me many stories about his experiences when I was growing up. Uh, the privation, uh, being forced to learn German, um, some of the exciting tales at war's end. Uh, well, his family, our family lived right below the Acropolis, and he claims that he climbed up to the top of the Acropolis and removed uh, the flag, the German flag that was up there, and that he divided it up into multiple pieces, he and his friends, and they each had a piece, uh, and that he brought it, well, his piece to America, um, but when he was a student at UCLA, it was stolen from him. So I don't know if this is an apocryphal story. Um, the Greeks are, are known storytellers, and there's probably an ele element of embellishing it, but I loved his stories. And for me, World War II was always the central event of the 20th century, and uh, I never had any difficulty answering the relevancy question. It was, it was clearly something that had shaped our world and, and there was a fascination. Um, so when I was in graduate school, um, I was interested in um, actually initially French history. I went to, graduate, to Harvard to study French history and it was my first semester of graduate school. I took a seminar on 20th century Europe with Charles Mayer and Professor Mayer said, you know, you all are going to specialize in your narrow topics, your dissertations, so, soon enough. So I want you to work in a different field. Um, and so I thought, well, I'll do French history ultimately. I've taken German for a couple of years. I can read the documents. And I thought, German history, World War II. Um, I'd had an interest in art for quite some time. I have an older sister who's an artist. And so I thought how I could combine these, these three topics. And uh, I ended up writing a seminar paper on the art collections of the Nazi leaders. And uh, Professor Mayer, who is one of the smartest people I've ever encountered, uh, he actually said something funny. Um, on the, uh, his comments on the bottom of the paper, he had said, you know, you, you might be able to write a dissertation on this topic, Nazi leaders' art collection. And I went to see him and I said, you know, I wanted to discuss this comment. And he said, well, normally I tell students that they should work on economic history or political history, bread and butter history. I think cultural history is kind of dessert. That was his line. But he says, but there's no academic scholarly study on Nazi art collecting and Nazi art plundering. So, yeah, you could do that and you know, I'll advise it. And um, so I've always remembered that, you know, cultural history as dessert. Um, later on, we had a conversation and he said, you know, you've done pretty well with this topic of Nazi art plundering and, you know, it's more than dessert. So uh, there was some satisfaction there. Um, and another professor who had a tremendous influence on me in graduate school at Harvard was Simon Schama. Um, the second semester of my first year, I took his seminar, Art History for Historians. And Professor Schama showed me the potential of art history and cultural history. And and, you know, he's so brilliant and dynamic. Um, I ended up going to attend his lectures even when I wasn't in the course. Uh, oftentimes they were at noon, at noon and I would take my lunch and just sit in and listen to him lecture. And I confess I try to channel Simon Shama whenever I teach because he's so dynamic in the way he explicates uh, slides and artworks. Uh, I'm a pale imitation in comparison. He's very special. But I'd say that Professors Mayer and Shama had the, the greatest influence on me and uh, asking questions and engage in an audience, you know, these are some of the things I learned from them.